Hi, my name's Eric Allen. We're up here talking about the junkyard dogs and some different ways of stabilizing elevated vehicles. It's a tension buttress system. It can be used as an A-frame or as a outrigger for unstable vehicles. The components are the base plate, our attachment ring. Our attachment ring always faces towards the vehicle. You have your main body of your strut, and then you have your extension of the strut. On the extension, if you see yellow, you've gone too far. It's the farthest you can go on the extension. We can attach a couple of different heads to the, the strut. One is called witch's hat. This one is an angled bracket or a bird's mouth. This is an axle strap. It can be used to wrap parts of the vehicle to create a attachment point. It's got a claw hook and two D hooks. This is our ratchet strap. On the end of both ends of the ratchet strap, you have an attachment hook. The ratchet itself always attaches to the attachment ring. And then we use the other end to attach the vehicle or we can take it back to itself and use our claw hook to attach to different points on the vehicle also. So anytime we're moving up on a vehicle extrication or a vehicle accident, the first thing that we want to do is chalk the vehicle so it's not going to start moving on us. Lots of different ways we can do that, but that's not what this course is really going to be about. We're going to really show the application of the junk junkyard dogs. And we start to hook our ratchet strap onto our attachment ring. We want to be able to pull as much of the slack out of the system as we can. When you pull the slack out, don't pull the slack out back towards you. Pull the slack out towards your attachment point. Unlock your ratchet. And ratchet it down to the tension starts setting in. If the, when you're ratcheting it down, listen to the vehicle and watch the vehicle. The vehicle will start making a little noise when you start picking up the weight, or you'll see some movement. Once you see the movement or you start hearing that, you know that you really captured the weight of the vehicle. You can also come down and just pluck the ratchet or the strap itself to see if it's got tension. Make sure that you lock your ratchet back all the way down. And then just so it doesn't get hit or disturbed, we can tie a knot around it or we can just wrap it. That'll also help mitigate the loose end. The safety tips around working around elevated vehicles that might move on you. A couple of things you never want to do is reach under the vehicle um, where you can't retract back from that vehicle very quickly if it starts moving on you. You never want to have your knees down on the ground. If that vehicle starts moving towards me, it's very difficult to get up and move away from the vehicle here. So try to keep on your toes, have some connection to the vehicle so that if that vehicle starts moving, I can easily move away from it. Instead of reaching under it to get pieces of equipment or passing things back and forth, you can use a, a hook, an ax, a halligan, a tool, whatever, so that you can reach under that vehicle and pull that equipment to you. Once we're here, we're just using this as an A-frame. So, got it hooked up. He's gonna take the slack out. Then we're gonna tighten the system. So what we're gonna show here is we've attached the strut to the vehicle. We've started to tension the system down a little bit, but the angle of our strap is not in line with the base of our strut. So when we attach our strut to our vehicle, we wanna keep our attachment point in line with our strut. Even though you can see that this one's pushed off and my system's tight, it's very easy for us to come up if somebody kicks her, we'll lose all our tension in our system. So the base plate, the attachment strap or the, the ratchet strap and our strut all need to be in aligned with each other. So if I move this over and get them back in alignment with each other, and then I tension my system, you can see it's a lot st more stable. So since we're setting up a buttress system or an A-frame or 
a, uh, an outrigger. We really want to increase the connection of the vehicle to the ground. We've got our attachment, our insertion point, and instead of going straight in this time and finding a, an anchor point here, we're doing more of a V pattern. So we took our axle strap, we found a point, made our connection. We came up here and used our, our claw, our hook. We attached into our attachment point on the strut itself. And then we took our ratchet strap off to another point and then tensioned it here. That allows us to gather more of the vehicle and put it in tension when we're stabilizing that vehicle. When we're looking for attachment points to the vehicle or insertion points, the vehicle has lots of holes on the bottom of it. Any place that you see a round rubber grommet, if you pop that out, there's gonna be a hole behind it so that you can get access to it with your witch's hat. But even the smallest of hole, as long as I can get an insert into it, that's gonna be a, a good anchor right there. When we're using our A-frame, what we wanna really look for is any place that there's bends and welds or the metal joining together. Bends in metal or folds in metal create strength. And on the bottom of the vehicle, any place that you see these bump outs, these square areas, that's really the backbone of the vehicle. So getting a hold of that, that's a very strong point to, to grab. Any of these structures, these are uh, stabilizer bars. Any welded or folded or bolted metal, we can take a wrap around those. To get our anchor points there. We can also take advantage of the holes by putting our claw and then hooking to our D-rings. Uh, a good place to make an anchor point on a vehicle is the strut head. Now, it's easy to find if our hood is open or is gone, but if we wanted to find the strut head and the, the hood was closed, all I have to do is look at the center of the tire come down to the seam on my hood and drop down eight or 10 inches, and I know that my strut head is gonna be behind that. Then I can punch a hole inside the hood, put my witch's hat there, so if it pushes through the, the hood, I know that I'm gonna run back into that strut and I'm gonna have a good attachment point. So here what we've done is we've got our insertion point, we're looking for our connection point. We're close to the vehicle, we don't want to have a, a lot of tail left over, or if we just want to double up our strength, we can take our hook, run it out, find an attachment, a hole or a bar, connect into it, and then run the strap back to the attachment ring. So I have both of my hooks on my attachment ring, pull as much of my slack out of the system as I can. and that will increase the strength of my system here. Now, even though that we have a working range of 1,300 pounds and a brake straight of 4,000, we don't need to put that much tension on this system. Once I've got it to where I've taken all that slack, it's nice and firm, my strut stays in place, that's all I really need to do. If I start pushing more than that, I might push through my insertion point or I might start moving the vehicle when I don't want to. What we're going to show here is a couple of different attachments for, for this vehicle. We're, going to, we're just using the straight A-frame busters here and we're connecting to the vehicle. I've got another system over here who's also connected. When we put this in tension, we're pulling the vehicle apart while the struts are holding the weight. We're going to show another way of doing that also. So you can see here, instead of being attachment points closer to the strut, we crossed the attachment points. So the first way, the vehicle was getting pulled apart. This one, we're actually creating a compression in the center of the vehicle, and we're still able to gather the weight on the sides. So here what we're showing is, if we've got a short strut and we have an elevated vehicle where we can't quite reach it, or can't reach it by a lot, we can build up a cribbing 
then put our, our strut on top of that and then make our connection to the vehicle. What we wanna really do is make sure that we keep our 45 degree or our 60 degree angle. And then the energy or the weight of the car is traveling down the strut, through our cribbing and into the ground. So here we have an elevated vehicle and we've chalked the front of it. So I know that my vehicle is not gonna slide out from underneath us. So I need to capture the weight in place from being able to come down or side to side by setting our struts at a bit of an angle so that we're capturing the weight and we're also creating that A-fame brutters so that it won't move back and forth. I have my two struts opposing. Most of the time on the bottom of the vehicle, any holes in the, in the vehicle are gonna be mirrored on both sides. So it's easy to get that attachment point. So when we have a vehicle where you have the trunk or the engine block elevated off the ground, what you have to start looking at is where's the fulcrum? Where's my tipping point? The engine block being much heavier, if I've got my trunk in the air, my fulcrum is gonna be in front of the B post and maybe even a little bit farther down. So what I have to do is I have to capture the weight above that fulcrum. So as I'm tensioning my system, I'm not getting that vehicle to start tipping. If my engine block is off the ground, my fulcrum is gonna be much closer to the engine block. So if my engine block was up, I'd have to set my, my struts closer to the engine block to be able to keep from getting into that tipping point. Safety consideration is I can look straight up, I can see clear sky, but I'm definitely inside of that collapse zone. If that vehicle was to fall, I would definitely be underneath it. So when you're moving around a vehicle that's elevated, don't take a path of travel that is straight across or near it. Make sure that you take a wide arc around that vehicle so if it becomes unstable and falls, you're not gonna get hit by it. So everything that we're doing here is to give you awareness of what the junkyard dogs can do and show you some of the capabilities. But what you really need to do is get out there, practice them, talk about it, think about how you're gonna set these things up and where the problems are with vehicles, especially when they're elevated off the ground.